live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Last year, I made a video about a highly controversial advertisement at Super Bowl 24 involving Nissan. If you want to learn more about that and why that advertisement only aired once before being polled, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, to summarize the whole ordeal, they had Ridley Scott, one of the most noteworthy directors of all time, direct an advertisement showing their car racing against other vehicles, including an airplane. The advertisement was really good. However, it came with a problem. At no point in the ad did they ever put a disclaimer that this was fictionalized and shouldn't be tried at home, which led many people to protest the advertisement and demand that it be pulled from the airwaves. Because of this, that Nissan ad ran at Super Bowl 24 and never again. It was a one-time thing. So why do I bring that ad up? Because that wasn't the only company starting with the letter N that got into a heated controversy with an advertisement that they tried to run at Super Bowl 24. Because while Nissan was in some hot water, so was this little company called Nike. During the Super Bowl, Nike was set to air an advertisement promoting their company that was supposed to be one of their biggest and boldest ideas yet. And while the advertisement generated attention, it was definitely not in the way that Nike envisioned, because this ad was riddled with controversy from outside forces, and led to a giant feud between Nike and CBS, the network broadcasting the Super Bowl. As for whether or not this should have even been a controversy in the first place, well, I'll let you be the judge of that. Because this is the story behind Nike's highly controversial advertisement at Super Bowl 24 which might be the most controversial Super Bowl ad that Nike has ever aired at the big game. Before I talk about the ad in question, we need some context to understand what the ad was supposed to be, as well as Nike's previous history at the Super Bowl. And the crazy part that might seem somewhat hard to believe is that despite Nike's rise in the 1980s, Super Bowl 24 was their first ever Super Bowl ad. This was the first time that they were going to promote their product during the big game. Yes, they had some of the most iconic and effective ads throughout the late 80s, from their Bow Nose campaign and their Just Do It series. But this was their biggest challenge yet. How do you not only follow up those campaigns, but do it on the biggest television stage of the year, and even surpass what those previous ads, which were already etched in pop culture history, were doing? Well... You bust out all the stops. You get anyone who's anyone, and you line up a ton of people to participate in the ad. They got Joe Pitka, widely regarded today as the greatest commercial director of all time, to direct this ad. They got not just Bo Jackson, but they got Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, John McEnroe, and some of the top announcers in the industry, including Pat Summerall, to be in this ad. The ad itself just from a production standpoint, cost over $1 million to make, and that doesn't even include the $1.2 million that it cost to buy the 60 seconds of ad space for the game, and other costs that went into making the ad. It was going to be a doozy, but in Nike's eyes, it was completely worth it. As Pick has said on this ad, the Super Bowl is the most important TV event there is. After all, what's bigger than the Super Bowl? They even got Jim Riswold, the same guy who wrote and created the Bono's ad, to write this advertisement. And Riswold definitely felt the pressure, but welcomed the challenge of trying to surpass his magnum opus. As Riswold said, Everyone keeps asking me, how are you going to top the Bow ad? If this one works out, I don't know how I'll top it. Maybe I'll become a monk. Just like that, the wheels were in motion. The advertisement was being filmed throughout November and December, as well as a commercial for the commercial. That's how all-out Nike was going with this. They had the film crew for this ad being filmed by a different film crew for a completely different commercial. Liz Dolan, the director of public relations for Nike, said on this, America's heroes are in our commercials. So the outside world is intrigued by these ads. They want to see more than the 30-second commercial. They want to see every moment these guys are on camera. 
if you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a commercial and millions to buy broadcast time for it, a couple thousand dollars a day more for a video crew is money well spent. They were taking this really seriously. It was estimated that just in terms of production costs, Nike also spent $100,000 on this commercial for the commercial. Long story short, Nike truly was pulling out all the stops to make sure that this ad was a success. And with that, with the 60 second advertisement completely done, all that was left for Nike to do was to submit the ad to CBS for approval to air during the game. What you're about to watch is exactly what Nike sent over to CBS. This is the original, uncensored version of the advertisement that caused a complete uproar. Roll the tape. Are we on yet? We on yet? We on yet? Oh, oh. hi folks. Hi everyone. Do we have a big one for you today? Jordan catches the rock. He drives down the left side of the fairway. Bo Jackson catches it at the wall and fires a bullet to McEnroe. Strange. Trevsky Jackson. Jordan! Yes! Wow. Delectable. And now a word from our sponsor. Nice shoes. Over to you, Dick. Over to you now, Al. Over to you, Tommy. Over to you, Dick. No, the other Dick. Over to you, Harry. Take me out to the... Lovely. And now a word from our sponsor. Nice shoes. Gretzky take the puck up the ice and fires it back and out of the bunker for a cold rock. Score. Game, set, and touchdown. Nice shoes. Oh, my. In all my days, years, decades, this is Sportscaster. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen anything like it. And now, a word from our sponsor. Holy cow! So you're probably asking yourself a very valid question. That was it? Where the heck was the controversy? Usually with controversial ads, you know exactly where the controversy comes from. Whether it was just for feet showing Americans hunting down a Kenyan runner to put shoes on him, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, or General Motors at Super Bowl 41 showing a robot committing suicide and jumping off a bridge because he lost his job. But here? What could have possibly been controversial or offensive about this ad? Was there some sort of hidden message? Nope. Could the ad have caused seizures? Nope. Was there a logo in there from another company that slipped in there? Nope. Nothing at all. Because you're never going to believe what the controversy from the Super Bowl advertisement was. Prepare yourselves for CBS blowing a complete non-issue out of proportion. Remember, CBS was the ones broadcasting the game. At the end of the day, they get the final say in what ad space to sell, and who gets to buy those ads. And if you watch this ad, titled The Announcers, you might have noticed something about some of the announcers. Not all of those guys work for CBS Sports. Sure, you had some guys like Pat Summerall who were in there and worked for CBS. Heck, Summerall was going to be the one calling the Super Bowl alongside John Madden. But you had others who were not. Marv Albert was in the ad. He worked for NBC Sports at the time. Dick Enberg was in the ad. He worked for NBC Sports at the time. Al Michaels was in the ad. He worked for ABC Sports at the time on Monday Night Football. And CBS, when they saw Albert, Enberg, and Michaels in the ad, was furious. Because in the eyes of CBS, Nike was directly promoting a competitor. CBS told Nike straight up, take out those announcers or we're not airing this advertisement. And when you think about it, this might just be the stupidest controversy in the history of Super Bowl advertising for a variety of reasons. Number one, how the heck are they promoting a competitor? At no point in the advertisement do you see any NBC or ABC logos. Not in the background, not on their jackets, not on the microphone, nothing. At no point in the advertisement do you see anything resembling an opposing TV network? Number two, even if they were promoting a competitor, which they're not, but let's just pretend that they were, does it make a difference? Is anybody going to watch this advertisement and say to themselves, wait a second, they got Marv Albert from NBC Sports on there. Let's flip away from the game and go over to NBC right now. Seriously, none of those announcers were working this Super Bowl. 
neither NBC nor ABC was airing any counter-programming against the Super Bowl. And no one is flipping over to the other network because of this ad. It's like if, at this year's Super Bowl, I wanted to do an ad where Tom Brady shows up for literally one second, and Fox banned the ad because they were scared that people would turn off the game after seeing the ad and go directly to the movies to watch 80 for Brady. Not a single reasonable person would even come to that conclusion. Number three, and this is the even more hysterical part. CBS never mandated that every announcer had to be from CBS Sports. They only had a problem with Michaels, Albert, and Enberg. Don Cherry of CBC is in there. CBS didn't complain about that. Harry Carey of WGN is in there. CBS didn't complain about that. Dick Vitale of ABC and ESPN is in there. They didn't complain. And CBS Sports outnumbered every other network even in this format, as they were the only network to have four announcers, whereas no other network had more than two. Why is Don Cherry not a problem? And why is Dick Vitale not a problem? But Al Michaels is! It's like if I'm running an advertisement for Aquafina, and I say that at no point during the ad can any bottles of Dasani or Poland Spring water appear. But Arrowhead water is totally fine. Seriously, what's the difference? Why are some competitors allowed and others aren't? Where's the consistency? You can't even say it's network TV versus cable TV when Dick Vitale was doing games for ABC. Literally nothing about this controversy makes any sense. CBS is not impacted in the slightest bit by the announcers showing up, especially since the actual specific announcers aren't even the focal point of the ad. You ask people to name three people they saw in that advertisement, and odds are, they're not naming any of the specific announcers. And to say that Nike was super confused about the reaction by CBS was an understatement, because they had no idea why the heck this was so controversial, why CBS was making a mountain out of a molehill, and why, if anything, CBS was creating a Streisand effect with this ad before that became a thing. Nike complied with CBS's bizarre request, with Tom Clark, the vice president and director of marketing, saying on this, We are a major advertiser and we don't want to be in an adversarial relationship with a major network. Marv Albert, who was supposed to be in the ad, but now they're saying he's not in the ad, said on this, they only wanted CBS announcers in it. Obviously, on the spots that will be on NBC and ABC, we'll be back. It's surprising. I think it's looking at things a little closely. But with that, the advertisement was re-edited, with just those three guys taken out. And now, it's time to look at the ad that Nike wound up airing at the Super Bowl. Roll the tape. Are we on yet? Are we on yet? We on yet? Oh. Oh. Hi, folks. Hello, everybody. Do we have a big one for you today? Jordan gets the ball. He drives down the left side of the fairway. Bo Jackson catches it at the wall and fires a bullet to McEnroe. Trey. Jackson. Ooh. Wow. Electric. And now a word from our sponsor. Nice shoes. Over to you, Dick. Over to you, Kurt. Over to you, Tommy. Over to you, Dick. No, the other Dick. Over to you, Harry. Take me out to the... Lovely. And now a word from our sponsor. Nice shoes. Frecky take the puck up the ice and fire the back in. Out of the bunker. For a oh, oh, oh. Game set and touchdown. Nice shoes. I couldn't have said it better myself. In all my day and years, Duck Cage, this is sportscaster. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen anything like it. And now, a word from our sponsor. Holy cow! This version of the ad caused no controversy whatsoever. In fact, according to the USA Today ad meter, it was the highest rated ad of the night. Nike hit a home run with this one, as this ad scored an average of 8.17 out of 10, making it the only advertisement of the night to hit above an 8. And if you're thinking to yourself that this is another one of those Berenstein Bears effect situations, and you're saying that you only remember one of the ads, but not the other, the ad that aired during the Super Bowl aired on CBS only, and the ad that was banned by CBS aired on NBC and ABC. So chances are, depending on what network you used to watch more of, that's why your memory works like that. 
Nike's win was just about the only win of the night, as Super Bowl 24 was widely regarded as the worst Super Bowl of all time, with the San Francisco 49ers destroying the Denver Broncos by a final score of 55 to 10. You can learn more about that game and yet another controversy that took place during it by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But this advertisement and the entire controversy behind it taught people a very valuable lesson more than three decades ago that still stands today. Sometimes, it's best to just ignore things. Seriously. If you make a mountain out of a molehill because you're scared that people are going to talk about that one thing, people are going to wind up talking about that one thing. It's human nature. It's what we do. You've piqued our interest and our curiosity because we love controversy. If CBS approved the original Nike ad for Super Bowl 24, then this is a complete non-story. There's nothing to talk about with this ad, other than the fact that it's a great ad that kept Nike's hot streak going at the turn of the decade. However, because CBS did this, we're still talking about this ad more than three decades later, not just because of how good it made Nike look, but because of how bad it made CBS look. Because if this ad couldn't be titled The Announcers, it should have been titled Bo Knows Stupid Controversies. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.